Oh man, I'm itching for a pen fix. I need some new pens. You know what I haven't gotten into is cheap ballpoints. I know who I can call. <sighs> Come on, pick up, pick up, pick up. Oh, hey, yeah, so uh, you got the stuff, man? Okay, I'll be right over. Thanks. Yes. I am Joe Van Cleve, and these are Confessions of an Office Supply Junkie. And I'm over here at Ethan Moses' Secret Squirrel World Headquarters. He is an office supply junkie also. Hello, I am Ethan Moses, and I am an office supply junkie. <laughs> What's up, it's Chad, let's look at some pens. <laughs> so Joe got me into fountain pens a while ago, which led me to buy every single fountain pen under $5 on AliExpress, which I dug for writing, not really drawing. And then um, we had a blue sheet incident in the bedroom, and then I wasn't allowed to use fountain pens in the bedroom. And then Laura bought a new couch, and then I pretty much had to stop using fountain pens. So I went back to ballpoint pens, and then um, I guess I discovered uh, this pen is the uh, Pilot Better ballpoint. We could take a look at this later. This is uh, maybe my favorite ballpoint pen. It's a lot. Uh, very similar to the Rotring 600, uh, which is like a very fancy $20 pen uh, that's all brass. But it's got this shape of like a hexagon and like a knurled, or this one's a ribbed grip. The Rotring is heavy, and uh, if you drop it, it's brass, and so it bends, and it's like really not very durable. And this one is much more durable, and you know, in my opinion, takes better refills, but um, that might be sacrilege. Anyway, I really love this pen, and then. Uh, I kind of got into fine pens and I discovered uh, the, well, I only have a red one here, but it's the fine Bic Crystal is a really good one. Um, and they don't make these in America anymore. They make them in Mexico and France, I believe. Where's that one from? Anyway, um, I wanted a bunch of other colors and they also make only in Europe the ultra fine. So this is a 0.8 and they make, um, what is this, the 0.7. You can look at their tips later. Um, and so I had to import these from the UK. And so while I was at it, I imported like all of these pens to see what every sub $1 pen on uh, from, you know, Korea and Japan and Germany and France was like. And so I got all of these pens and one of them is super good <laughs> and the rest are garbage. All right, so, you know, this is your standard Bic Crystal. It's very good. I think there's a new, like, lubricated ink in it. You know, it's fairly smooth, uh, particularly on this coated paper. Um, and that kind of led me, I usually write with these ballpoint pens, to buy this uh, very fancy $1, same as all the rest, medium Bic Crystal in gold, the baller status, right? And then... Um, I was real curious about other Bic crystals, so they make an extra bold. I think you've talked about this. this is a very thick, super uh, smooth line, but for notebook writing, uh, not small enough, all my loops close. And so then I bought uh, some of these fine Bic crystals, which you can kind of find on Amazon in huge packs, but I wound up getting one for free somehow. And this is a pretty fine line. I don't have the blue one here, but it's somewhere. Um, and then in Europe, they make these extra fine. So this is a 0.8 uh, and the ultra fine is a 0.7. You can see it has that one nice like needle tip. Um, you can see it. And that's a very fine line. And I really dug these, but you know, um, I had to import these from overseas. Nobody here sold them for 25 cents or whatever. And so, uh, you know, you needed to buy so many pens to get free shipping from the UK, and so I bought a whole mess of different pens, all pretty much the same damn pens, and, you know, here they are. Uh, it's a Sharpie that doesn't belong, right? So the first bunch that I was super curious about are these uh, Mon Ami 
uh, 153s, which are iconic pens uh, from Korea. The mediums are yellow and the fines are white. And so I guess we'll look at the blues. Um, these have this interesting click mechanism uh, that click down and uh, open up like that. And they don't have a clip. They're pleasing shape to me, kind of very pencil-y. And uh, I had seen these on the internet quite a bit. Um, but I had never seen one in real life, but apparently they're like the big pen in Korea and maybe Thailand or somewhere. I think they were 21 cents a piece, so I bought one each in fine and medium and blue and black. And uh, they are not good pens, not at all. Uh, they're not smooth, not dark, you gotta press on them. They're like the classic ballpoint that you didn't like that you find in the bank. But I think they're beautiful and very interesting and simple and something that I might 3D print around. And, you know, you can replace the uh, cartridge. It's the standard ballpoint cartridge, which I rather like, um, with something else. But they do have this very fine uh, tip, so maybe nothing, not many pens will, uh, many refills will fit through the tip here, but you could drill it out. Um, I'm all, always into pen mods. Um, and then we have the fine one, which I think is even worse. I mean, it's not terrible on this coated paper. This is a uh, Monami 153 fine. Anyway, so I got these guys. They were not my favorite pens, but I'm happy to have a few of them to check them out. Um, the other end of the spectrum of the most expensive disposable pens, I spent a whole $2 on one of these things. Um, this guy, uh, you can't even get at the refill, I don't think, without breaking. I think this is a glue joint or an ultrasonic weld. Probably glue. Uh, maybe there's a divot there that's ultrasonic. Anyway, um, this is uh, Carondash, which is a Swiss company. The fanciest disposable ballpoint you can get. It has like a classic click. I think um, they make a metal version of this that's the 849, I believe. It's a real fancy pen. Anyway, it's got this silent click. And uh, it's smoother, but nothing special. Uh, I still prefer this Pilot Better ballpoint over here. Um, but, you know, it's fine. Is it worth $2? No, I don't think so. But, uh, Karan Dash uh, 825. And I think they only make them in medium. I might be mistaken. Um, it says Swiss, so you know it's fancy. Okay, so then, you know, this is the Pilot Better Ballpoint to Medium. And that's got pretty good ink in it. You can put some uh, Pilot Acro Ball ink in there if you just trim the end down. And it's, this is like kind of my favorite pen and they're about a buck, very expensive, uh, but great. Um, what else did I get? I got this uh, Coombe Tri-Ball, which is a weird pen. It's actually very interesting the way that it was made. It has this bizarro needle tip. It's got a triangular shaped body with rounded edges that I really don't love. The most interesting thing to me here is you can tell that somebody stuck this on a lathe and very imprecisely cut the cone <laughs> at the end of this thing. They didn't even have an injection mold. Uh, you know, and my thinking is they probably pop them out of the mold this way rather than a two-part. Um, and so this was a very interesting pen to me because it is manufactured, uh, I don't want to say poorly, but so poorly. Um, it, you know, does it matter? No, but it's it's like I've never seen somebody just like, they put this damn thing in a pencil sharpener basically to form it, which I've never seen in an industrial process. Anyway, um, the ink, I only bought one of these in black, maybe it was 50 cents. The ink is dark and smooth and wonderful. Um, really, really great ink for a ballpoint. Uh, do I ever use it? No, I've found some better things, but um, you know, even the printing is bad on this thing, which do I care? No, but I think it's really interesting how this is like a German pen and has the worst manufacturing out of anything that I've seen for the pen body, but really great ink. Okay, what else do we have? <laughs> These. Uh, Pentel, uh, what are they? Super ball points. Um, Pentel is great. They make some of my favorite pencils. It looks like it has a grip here, but that's just, uh, painted on. <laughs> um, 
they're kind of made like gel pens, but what I like about them is they don't have the uh, like a gel here that feels gross. And they write pretty nicely, ball pointy, but kind of the way they work is you you have this stick pen with um, this refill that you know comes out and is kind of held in over here by this uh, cap. And it just, it's like a little wiggly. And uh, I don't love that wiggliness for precision, so. Um, are these great pens? Yeah, and they're maybe like 50 to 70 cents. Um, but I think you can do better. Um, and these come in like fine and medium, uh, and blue and black, and maybe some other colors. Whatever, I didn't really love them. <laughs> okay. Then I got a Schneider uh, K15 and a Schneider uh, K1. Okay. Um, these are also totally crappy. I don't like them at all. These were also fairly expensive German disposable ballpoint pens. Uh, do they write well? No, it's got this very light ink. Uh, Schneider K15. And this is the uh, Schneider K1. So the deal why I bought these were they were like pretty cheap disposable ballpoint pens and um, Schneider has some really interesting lubricated inks like the XB series which I bought a couple of those which I kind of knew about but hadn't tried all of them and I thought these might be uh, lubricated you know hybrid inks that are very smooth. They are not. They're just classic ballpoints. This one is the fanciest one. It's maybe two bucks and it's got this like top heavy design. It's stupid and I hate it. It's a dumb pen. Um, this one is slightly nicer, but it's, you know, just your classic light, draggy, not so great ballpoint. I don't really see any need to use this. The pen body is fine. Maybe you'd put some other refill in it, but I'm not super into it. Uh, I don't know why you would ever want one of these when you have a Pilot Better ballpoint for the same price. Um, however, you know, you might just be curious to try every ballpoint pen and waste 20 bucks on uh, eBay or wherever. Um, these are really interesting Schneider pens, which is why I tried uh, the K1 and K15 over here. Uh, this is the Sch Schneider Slider XB series, and so they make the Memo, the Edge, the Rave, there's a bunch of different ones, but basically if it says Slider and XB, that's extra bold, and uh, Sliders, they're lubricated ink, so this makes a real fat line, and it's very smooth. Schneider slider XB. I've tried the medium ones and they're really not that smooth. These are real fun to write with. I don't love the rubberized body grip. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're good, I guess, for marking things. And this edge one um, came in brown and I was curious about that. And this brown is not nearly as dark as I would like. And uh, I really hate triangular grips. It forces me to hold things like a reasonable person, which I am not. So whatever, I mean, this is good. Uh, Schneider XB, whatever, that's fine. Um, and then, you know, I kept buying some of these uh, German ballpoints. These are very uh, fancy 50 cent ballpoints. Um, this is the Schneider Stick 430F. You know, it's a really iconic big knockoff, kind of like these uh, Mona Mies, you know. Um, and I have one in the medium, they have a clear body. Uh, it's very reminiscent. They have a nicer cap than these Bix, and they have a more solid, thicker body. Um, but the refill is actually one of the worst refills in the batch. It's light and draggy and not smooth, and I don't know why anybody would want these except for, we'll get to why I wanted them later. But, you know, I tried them out, they're 50 cents and they were fine. I like these pen bodies. I really dislike the refills. If you're really into, you know, draggy, crappy old ballpoints, they're nice pens. So I bought these. They were fine. Um, you know, one thing that I would note is like this, uh, this super smooth Schneider over here is great, but this is maybe a dollar and I, it's rubbery and I don't really love this rubber. Um, however, the Bic uh, 1.6 millimeter extra bold crystal also has that style of very lubricated ink and it's smooth and I think it's like a much more precise uh, thing to hold and I much prefer this pen at like I don't know 
20 cents uh, to this pen. So Although, the pick is the better pen. Uh, for me, marginally, yeah. they're both good, but um, I, you know, if I had, if they were the same price, I would buy the Bic, and the Bic is cheaper, so yeah. I like these as the sort of fat-tipped, smooth pens. Um, then I found these Schneider Vizes. Uh, I have one in a medium and one in a fine uh, dark blue. Um, these things, I was amazed that they're ballpoints and not gel. So, one, they have these nice caps that actually have like a snap. I don't know if you can yeah. hear that. I'll do it near the mic. Anyway, marginally nicer pen body, much like these um, uh, Staedtler 430 sticks. Um, nice cap compared to the big for sure not this uh leg poking thing people like to chew on um these things i was amazed that they weren't gel pens like they're so smooth there's no feedback at all and the ink is very wet and um if you're looking for the smoothest ballpoint of all time this thing beats like a jet stream it's it's almost a gel pen i don't know how long they will last and i also find that the ink is a little blobby uh, let's see if I can get it to do that. Yeah, you can kind of see. I don't know. When I'm writing with it, um, it makes some blobs, so I don't really love it. But um, this is a really incredible pen. I think they were like 40 or 50 cents a piece. And uh, yeah, if, if you're into uh, hexagonal stick pens that have very smooth ink, uh, the Schneider Viz is great. Um, they also have this blue-black, which is a rarity in uh, ballpoint pens, which I really like blue-black. And uh, they have a fine of it, too. Um, that being said, I don't love the color of this blue-black. It's almost green to me. So take that with you. I have a medium one over here, too. I went all out, really. <laughs> went went for broke. I uh, used all my game stonk money on it. But, um, you know... It's not as consistent a performer, but it's very, um, very smooth. So this is a Schneider Viz. Very interesting pen. Will I buy another one? Probably not. I'll probably use a gel pen if I want that smoothnessity. But um, it's a great pen if you're looking for that. That's, that's the one for somebody I know. And then... Um, I guess we're at the very end of these pens. Uh, this one I'm going to give to you, Joe. Uh, this was my absolute favorite. I'm going to take the uh, little wax ball or glue off the tip. This is the Link Pentonic, and a bunch of people have been doing YouTube videos about this pen uh, recently. It is an Indian market pen. They probably sell for like six to ten cents a piece in India, and I probably paid mm, forty cents a piece in a box. Um, and it's this is the fine they make a medium i don't have any of those i don't have black but this thing is like the smoothest ballpoint i've ever used including the jet stream it's like it's on jet stream level of smoothnessity um and it's just like very pleasant it doesn't blob at all it's very consistent um it makes a fine line and a dark line and it's just wonderfully smooth not as smooth as like this viz but I, I would almost consider this a gel pen. Um, of the ballpoints, uh, this is the best. So this is the Link Pentonic 0.7 millimeter fine. So my one gripe about this pen is it's got this sort of like looks cool stippled type of finish, um, but I find it like really uh, slippery in my hand more so than even like a smooth uh, Bic ballpoint. And so um, I'm not a real fan of these pen bodies, but what I found out you could do is um, you can pull the ink out just like you can in a Bic pen, and they will fit in a Bic pen. So let's find a standard Bic pen here. This one I was using for a while. You can pull this guy out, and you can put it in a Bic body. Now, this little uh, tip here is just a tiny bit smaller than the Bic. Um, so much... Uh, so much similar that you can actually jam the Bic in within the tolerances of the Pentonic. 
Um, I'm not going to do it because then we've got to pull it out. But you, you can jam it in there if you wanted for some reason, if you preferred the big ink and the pentomic body or you just had a spare. This one will, you know, kind of, you can shake it out. But what I did was I put a tiny piece of tape around here and it jams in just fine. Um, and the big bodies are good, but I had these terrible Schneiders uh, that actually have nice a body. nice body that I, I prefer these. It has a much nicer cap. Um, I really wanted this gold Bic to be my thing, but after, uh, you know, this cap will actually fit on the Bic uh, in a nice way, but um, these are a little bit shorter and fatter and uh, have a nicer taper. And these were my favorite, you know, sub 60 cents uh, pen bodies. And so I just put a little uh, piece of tape around this bit and I jammed it in the Schneider. Um, and now this has become like kind of my go-to pen for- German uh, you know, body books. Indian cartridge. Yes, yeah, and this is the best. So uh, Schneider, this is weird when I'm writing like kind of square, I always, right like this and so no it's not a schneider sorry it's a stapler oh stapler red four thirty f So this is my pick for, you know, did I review all of the ballpoint pens out there? No, but, um, you know, for all of the ballpoint pens I could get my hands on within a week from the UK uh, and the US, my all-time favorite for like small notes in a notebook is this uh, Stadler Stick 430. And then, you know, sometimes I've been known to write with the Schneider Vizes, but they're a little too smooth for me. And so, like, if I have to write somebody a letter in, like, large handwriting, I'll usually use these uh, big, bold, big crystals. Um, and, yeah. Oh, one more thing. Have you ever seen this pen, Joe? Uh, looks like a big round stick. Yeah, you can cut the ends off a round stick and make a two-color pen. I always carry this around in my computer bag. Oh, I bet people have done that, but uh, just if you haven't, it's, it's a useful... <laughs> pen out there. Anyway, this has been Confessions of an Office Supply Junkie. <laughs> a review of ballpoint pens. This is Joe Van Cleve. I am an office supply junkie. So is Ethan Moses, and he's really done the deep dive. I gotta say, this is world class office supply junkery. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad to be here, and uh, until next time, stay creative. Have a good day. Bye.